Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hello. Thank you all for coming. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. Uh, I've been here before. Um, and thank you very much to the Salt Marsh for inviting me. Uh, we we're doing a presentation today dealing with an issue that always comes up when I'm talking to folks. Um, my Rick O'Connell, where I work, there are 52 of us. I'm the person that does elder law. Uh, there are a set of us that do estate planning. I love being there because that's all I have to do. I don't have to figure out anything else. Well, a set of questions that always come up, though, when I'm doing estate planning relate to what happens to your body after you die? How does all that stuff work? Inevitably, there are questions about funerals and prepaids and burial lots and all that stuff. And so I decided for this year to actually do a presentation on it because I figured, first of all, it would force me to learn the stuff because I'd always say, uh, you know, I kind of know. Um, and so I did that. But also, I've, I've, been, I've done this presentation each time with a funeral director. Uh, in this case, Bill Chapman. Hello. We're part of Chapman Colin Gleason Funeral Home um, on Cape Cod and just off Cape Cod as well. So we asked him to come out. Uh, so that we could both be talking about this so that you can kind of get a sense as a very practical matter of what all of these issues are. I've done presentations here before. I often talk about my friends Frank and Mary uh, and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., my make-believe couple. Um, their goal in life, as I always tell people, is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And then after that, they want things divided up among their kids. Oftentimes, at that point in these presentations, I'll say, so if Frank dies, now, what is going to happen to Mary? Well, today we're actually going to talk about Frank after he dies. So what exactly is going to happen to him or to his remains? So as a legal matter, who controls the body or your remains, because it, it, that's what they're called, your remains after the moment that you die? Now, the answer to that, interestingly, was that until a few years ago, there was no state law, state statute that said that that actually said who was in control of your remains after you die. There were some cases, and the cases said, first, your spouse, second, next of kin. But of course, and, and so if you're distinguishing between, distinguishing between spouse and next of kin, and it's like in this case, Mary and the children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., it's easy to figure that out. Spouse is first, and then it's the next of kin. One of the issues, though, is if you've got three kids, um, because there is no spouse, and they disagree on something, there's nothing that explains how to deal with that, right? Interest, interestingly, right? Now, have you ever had an, uh, an argument, a, a case of a family that just goes, no, I really want Ma to be cremated. No, I really want it. Have you had that happen? Absolutely, absolutely. And in those situations, have you ever had, what do you do? Most of the time, they work it out. In fact, I'd say, almost 100% of the time. One time, uh, it didn't work out, and they fought, and there was a lawsuit against each other. And there was a lawsuit. So, but that, ultimately, it worked out. Yeah. But the children did not get along. Um, they had different views of what was happening. Um, so it was kind of kind of messy, but that was the only time that's ever happened in my 20-year career. Um, so, but most of the time, families work it out. They come together. Uh, they may have some differences, but they come together they, and they come with an agreement because it is their family. Because it is their family. Right. But I get, and and so, so there have been those kinds of cases. Finally, recently, about two years ago, as a result of the Massachusetts adoption of something called the Uniform Probate Code, we adopted, um, a, among other things, a provision of that code which deals with this and which says if you have a will, then the personal representative, used to be called the executor or the executrix, that is named in the will, may, does not have to, but may take charge of your remains um, for the purpose of doing whatever you have said to do in, in writing, in written instructions, right? Now, the reason why I mention that is, um, first of all, those instructions don't have to be in the will. The will has to exist 
right, so that there is really a named personal representative. It doesn't have to have been probated because, of course, that always happens months after you've been buried, right? But there has to be a will. So if you're concerned about this issue and you think there may be disagreements, do a will. It can be a really simple will, right? doesn't have to be fancy, and it just, it's just so that you've named a personal representative. Or if you already have a will, then actually you've already taken care of this. All you have to do now is write down some instructions, right? Or, I shouldn't say or, and one of the ways of doing that, I think, would be to go talk to Bill Chapman. If, do you have folks that come in and do kind of a, some, something in writing that is a, pre, that a pre-need contract? Absolutely. Even if they're not funding it, even if they're just going in for instructions? Correct. People come to us and they sit down, they have questions. Um, there's a whole, bit, a whole bunch of different reasons. Um, they, they want ideas of funerals. They want to sometimes get things in place. Um, they don't want to have their children or family have to deal with it. Um, sometimes they just want to um, prepay it, um, which locks in the costs. Um, there's, a, there's numerous reasons why. But, uh, and we're, and we're going to cover the prepayment issues a little bit later on because I think that's an important issue. But there are people that just come in and want to get things set up. Right, just come right. in, just get some basic ideas, get a, you know, a, a record started, and just to have something in place so that you know, there's something there. And so what I'm telling you is if you've done that and you've signed something with them, then the personal representative actually has a place to go as long as the personal representative is aware that this exists. Right. right? And, and I would say, you know, getting back to the wills, yeah. um, if it's critically important that you want to be cremated or to be buried, you should state that in your will uh, so that there's no, uh, no misunderstanding. Um, you know, time of death, if uh, the three kids come together and, you know, two of them say mom should be cremated and the other one says no, she should be buried, well, there's a problem. You go to the will, the, you know, the, the parent states what she, she really wanted, there's no problem. Um, and and, and I think that's very important. And I'm just going to add something there. As a, to me, I guess my interpretation of this would be a little bit different, but very close, which is once you have your will, you've got your name personal representative, right? The, the, the cremation language does not have to be in that will as long as you've got a personal representative because in that case, if the three kids are disagreeing, as long as the personal representative is willing to step in and you may want to talk to that person about it because it may be a third party, especially if your kids don't all get along and you've named a third party personal representative, you really need to ask them if they're willing to step in and make sure this gets taken care of. Any questions regarding this particular question? Yes, ma'am. Is the personal representative the same as an executor? Yes, that term, the terms executor and executrix uh, were, were eliminated in the current Uniform Probate Code, although it, in, in the term in personal representative replaced that, replaced personal, re, replaced executor, temporary executor, special executor, there are all these other terms, all gone, except that the, the, the law also said that all of those other words, to the extent that they had been used, continued to be valid. Okay, does that answer your question? Okay, certainly. So, so now we're just going to talk about, among other things, donating your body parts and donating tissue or bones. Now, I know that is not as, as commonly done out here, uh, and I know we just did a presentation in Martha's Vineyard, similar issue because you're a long ways away. But I want to talk to you about it because there are some bizarre things about this part, um, which I learned when I was doing this research. And, and so, first of all, when it, there are two kinds of ways of donate, donating your body. You can donate all of it by some agreement with a medical school or with, right? And, and, and have you had that happen? That people Absolutely. have? Absolutely. And then, and, and how does the body get to the medical school in that case? How do the remains get to the medical school? Well, we transport the body directly to the medical school. I see. And in that situation, can you still have a, a traditional ceremony? Could, I mean, can you, can you embalm somebody even if the body is going to be going to the medical school? It, no, if, if the body's going to the medical school, it would go directly to the medical school inside of 24 hours, the, the quicker the better. Um, certainly once the medical school has completed all their studies, uh, the remains are available if, uh, if the families wanted some sort of specific ceremony. I see, um, I see. But they may be waiting a while for those remains. Right, you know, right. one to two years. Oftentimes I see families doing uh, something like a celebration of life or, or something along those lines without the remains present. Yeah, so, so there's that possibility. The more common donation 
is the one that you always hear about where you put something on your license and you're registering in the registry of motor vehicles and there's like an organ donation or a, a, a line there. And people assume, as I did before I was researching this, that the way that you cause your anything that you wanted to get donated donated was by doing one of those uh, anatomical gift cards, right? 